Thank you very much. So for this talk, I got a blessing from the NA62 collaboration to speak on their behalf. And uh, because the talk is 30 minutes, I will focus mostly on uh, the results from, from the NA62 experiment. And this is going to be more experimental talk than, than a theory talk because it's uh, difficult to put everything into, into the time which uh, I got. Uh, nevertheless, I start uh, uh, with some um, graphic or with some illustrative uh, in introduction. Uh, we are well, we know very well the standard model, uh, which uh, sometimes it's on a t-shirt, uh, sometimes the Lagrangian is on a cup or mug. Uh, and uh, uh, the question may arise uh, if uh, it is uh, such a nice, uh, simple, and well-known form, uh, why do we need uh, beyond standard model physics? And uh, so there are, uh, there are no accelerator contradictions uh, with, with the predictions of the standard model at the level of uh, more than a couple of sigma. And uh, uh, the so the reason why we want physics beyond standard model is not really uh, because uh, some accelerator experiment would uh, be outside of uh, predictions of this model. Uh, it's rather that uh, we have uh, cosmological observations that uh, do not kind of, uh, that, that clearly show that there must be new physics. But uh, even this uh, Lagrangian, uh, it uh, contains uh, a set of numbers, uh, three by three complex matrices, uh, which are totally um, un undef unpredicted by the model. They are like three parameters. And when we look at uh, the observables in the standard model, they can still be reduced to just uh, four parameters uh, out of the uh, CKM matrix. Uh, so having four parameters uh, really is not such a, such a big deal. Uh, but the, the real big deal uh, is here in this potential uh, because this potential, we believe, contains a quadratic and a quartic term. And uh, the, the, quart the quadratic term uh, has a, an m squared um, dimensionful parameter. The only dimensionful parameter in the Lagrangian is uh, right there in this quadratic uh, term in the potential. It must be it, uh, of the specific sign uh, to get uh, spontaneous uh, symmetry breaking, uh, gauge symmetry breaking as U2 cross uh, U1 hypercharge. But uh, it's, uh, so we don't know why the specific sign was chosen by nature. But uh, most importantly, we don't know why the absolute value, the magnitude of this term, why it is uh, of the order of 100 GeV. So this, this Lagrangian by itself introduces an ad hoc scale, 100 GeV, which uh, we have no idea where it, where it is coming from. And it could equally well be uh, any other scale. And uh, in fact, we would, may expect uh, that it would be uh, the Planck scale uh, as uh, the only relevant scale uh, when, when gravity is introduced. But uh, at the moment, uh, it's not, we know it's not the Planck scale. We know it's 100 GeV and we don't know where it is coming from. Uh, so th this is, in my opinion, the most pressing issue in the, in the standard model. So it's very natural to contemplate that there should be a different mug uh, with uh, a different Lagrangian of a more complete theory, uh, which would only con contain this question mark which be, would be replaced by a different Lagrangian containing only dimensionless parameters uh, and uh, would explain how in this uh, effective theory how we get this dimension full 100 GV parameter in, inside this potential. And hopefully we also would also explain the, the sign of, of the potential and why there is this spontaneous symmetry breaking. Uh, so now uh, the Surge is for uh, the more complete theory. Uh, that means like uh, new particles uh, with uh, like naturally at the scale of 100 GeV or 1 TeV, and that's why we have a DLHC. Now at DLHC, we have tried for more than 10 years now, 
and uh, we did uh, very uh, complete and comprehensive searches and uh, we haven't found any uh, new particles at the TV scale. Uh, there's still, uh, the, the search is on. It's, it's not like uh, uh, it's, uh, everything has been searched over and uh, we may have a chance to get to, to push the limits and hopefully to, to find these particles. Uh, that's why we are getting ready for high luminosity, high luminosity LHC uh, in the next run at the LHC. Uh, but uh, simply at the moment, uh, there are no new particles beyond the standard model particles. Uh, and in this situation, it's uh, uh, useful to consider uh, experiments which would be at much lower energies, uh, well below, well below uh, 100 GeV. Uh, so in these experiments, like DNA62 experiment, uh, we are not going to produce directly uh, these new particle states, but they can reveal themselves uh, at uh, either rare processes or processes that are completely forbidden in the standard model. And uh, these kind of ideas have been floating around for a long time. And uh, we know from, from the standard model that the third generation fermions are special because their masses are at the hundred, well, the, the mass of the top quark is at the hundred GeV scale, uh, while the masses of the second and third fermion generations are at the much lower scales. So uh, it appears that uh, the first thing you would think of uh, is uh, let's look at uh, rare processes uh, or forbidden processes related to decays of uh, B mesons. And those have been searched uh, over uh, with uh, like great emphasis put on uh, uh, measurement of uh, BS to decaying into a mu plus mu minus or uh, similar uh, decays, uh, either leptonic or semi-leptonic of, of B mesons. Uh, that's why we have uh, the LHCB experiment at, uh, at the LHC, uh, which uh, is really dedicated to B physics. Uh, and that's why we have like uh, B factories like uh, Bell in Japan or, or Babar, which, well, from the past. Uh, however, uh, it's the same story as I just described about the, the LHC experiments that in, in the B, uh, the B meson decays, no signs of uh, new physics or no, no real uh, contradiction between the standard model predictions and uh, observations were found. Uh, so now is the time to focus on uh, the first two fermionic generations, uh, maybe we would find uh, some uh, new physics signals uh, in rare or forbidden decays. And that's why this uh, NA62 uh, experiment is, uh, is important. So that's, that's basically my introduction why, why we need the NA62 experiment. Now the outline is here. Uh, I will describe briefly the experiment and then tell you what kind of results we already have uh, from, from this experiment, uh, recent results. Uh, so uh, the LHC, the, the big accelerator collider is uh, right here with the four experiments, uh, ATLAS and uh, CMS, which are multi-purpose detectors uh, dedicated to these uh, direct searches of new particles. Then there is uh, LHCB uh, up here, uh, which is dedicated to B physics. And then there is the, the ALICE experiment, uh, which specializes, uh, say, to uh, heavy ion collisions. Uh, so the, if you look uh, around uh, this uh, circumference of the LHC, you don't find uh, the NA62 experiment because it's not the LHC uh, experiment. Or, uh, it, it's not an uh, LHC experiment. It's uh, an experiment which uses protons uh, from the SPS when uh, uh, these protons are not being injected into the LHC. Uh, so there is an extra uh, 
arm going out of the SPS with uh, protons delivered to, the, to other experiments, uh, including uh, the NA62. Uh, NA means north area, and 62 is just a, a number. Uh, at the moment, there are about 30 institutes and uh, 30, 300 collaborators, so it's not really a, a big experiment comparable to ATLAS or, or CMS. On the contrary, uh, it's uh, an experiment where uh, if uh, we, ha we get like, young people involved doing uh, analysis, they can equally well contribute towards the uh, software development uh, of, the, of the experiment. And they, they get uh, acquainted with uh, many uh, parts of the experiment or subdetectors. And uh, it's, uh, it's different than uh, being part of uh, the ATLAS collaboration or CMS, where you get uh, your specialization in a kind of narrow uh, part of, of the detector. Uh, so this is like an advertising for young people uh, from either here or from um, Prague, Budapest, or Warsaw to uh, come to, if they, if they wish to, to, to join. Uh, now uh, we look, uh, so far we've been looking at uh, K plus decaying in flight, which is special because there is no target where this K plus would, uh, would hit, uh, slow down, and then decay. Uh, uh, I will show the experimental setup on the next slide, uh, just uh, this to highlight that uh, this is very special. Uh, then, uh, uh, from the history point of view, uh, these are the years uh, we've been running, and uh, this is the data taken uh, out of these runs. And you can see that uh, we, are, uh, we are looking after uh, like the 10 to the 12 particles on target, or 10 to the 12 uh, useful kaon uh, decays uh, uh, searched for in, in the experiment. And uh, the reason is uh, that uh, the primary goal is to measure this uh, branching ratio. Uh, which at the level of the standard model is below 10 to the minus 10. So this is an extremely rare decay, and uh, it requires to get uh, really such huge quantities of uh, kaons, uh, and that's only possible because uh, we have such a big luminosity uh, designed for the LHC. Uh, So this is the experimental setup from, from left to right. Uh, there is a beryllium target uh, which produces uh, something like 70% of, of pions, 23% uh, of protons, and just 6% uh, of uh, kaons. And this is, what we, this is what we like, or this is what we need. Uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, 75 GeV kaons are selected by the magnetic field. And uh, the uh, frequency is, uh, uh, is here. Uh, the frequency is like uh, 5 megahertz uh, on decays in this uh, decay uh, region. So this is the decay, the vacuumed uh, decay region uh, where uh, these kaons, uh, if they are decaying uh, in flight, then we have a chance to register the, the product, the decay products. So in this specific uh, golden mode, when a, a kaon decays into a pion and a pair of neutrinos, obviously we only see the, the positively charged pion, and uh, all these detectors around are there to get the pion to uh, veto uh, in a particular decay to, to veto that there, were, that there were no muons and no additional pions. And uh, moreover, uh, it's uh, uh, kind of uh, time sensitive. That is, we, we, we know here from upstream, uh, we can count every kaon and we can uh, match an incoming kaon with a, a 
pion from, from, as a daughter product from this decay. Uh, from our Slovak contribution, I should say that we are, we become uh, kind of experts uh, and uh, coordinators for this uh, straw spectrometer, which uh, registers uh, charged particles primarily. We are after the positively charged pions. And uh, these are our contributions, uh, which I will not read. I will just, uh, I just wanted to show that uh, uh, in more than 10 years, uh, we contributed significantly to many aspects of, uh, of this uh, experiment. Uh, now this slide is about this uh, most important uh, decay. Uh, it's the kaon in as the initial state. Then there is a U quark, which is kind of a spectator. Uh, and uh, then uh, this uh, anti-S quark uh, is decaying as an FCNC via a loop uh, into an anti-D quark and a pair of neutrinos. And uh, these would be the one loop uh, Feynman diagrams, uh, which uh, we do not show, here we do not show the Higgs ghosts. Uh, and uh, finally, the prediction uh, very recently uh, up, uh, updated by, by Buras uh, is uh, 8.6 times 10 to the minus 10. There is uh, 10 to the minus 11. There is very close to 10 to the minus 10. Uh, and please note the error. So the, the theoretical error now is uh, at the 5% level. And uh, uh, Buras writes in, in his latest papers that uh, uh, this uh, theoretical uh, endeavor can uh, result in a, uh, in a theoretical error which would be at a 1% level. So th there is still a room for improvement on the theory side. Uh, however, uh, as, you, as you will see, uh, the experimental results are far worse and uh, there is room for the experiment to improve the statistical error and uh, uh, hopefully, well, it's uh, difficult to say to, to get to this level, but at least to improve. Uh, in, uh, if there is supersymmetry, for example, uh, then there would be uh, also charged Higgs states contributing in the loop, and there would be uh, also particle diagrams. That means everywhere here where you see a quark, there could be a squark. Everywhere where you see a W or Z, uh, could be a charging or a neutralino. Uh, and uh, we have a paper with Peter Matak about uh, contributions from the left-left uh, squarks uh, to, to these diagrams. Uh, these left-left uh, contributions as the most dominant in some regime of uh, SUSI breaking. Uh, now, from the experimental uh, point of view, uh, I, I like this plot here. Uh, you see the years on the x-axis, and you can see that, uh, and now these are the uh, branching ratio values reached by the experiment. So, in like many years ago, uh, it was difficult to observe anything. Uh, it was just uh, the limit went down and down. And uh, finally, there was a Brookhaven experiment with uh, seven signal events, uh, which was still too few to really claim an evidence of, of this decay. Uh, and only very recently, uh, NA62 has uh, two results, uh, notably the last one, uh, which uh, is up here. And uh, if you count the number of sigmas, it's uh, more or less like a three sigma above the zero value. So we kind of almost uh, can say that uh, we have uh, the first evidence of uh, uh, this decay really measured, being measured. Uh, but the error is a far, a far cry from the theoretical error here. Uh, nevertheless, we still take data. And uh, uh, this is only the result from uh, the years uh, uh, below the 
last shutdown, and uh, the latest data has not been uh, finalized yet. The, the analysis is very complicated. We have to make sure we understand, especially the the upstream background. Uh, there is a, in in the beam uh, which we are getting into the decay region. There occasionally there could be some. Uh, background events which look like uh, the signal events which are from uh, from this uh, KTAG and G2K uh, detectors uh, upstream. Uh, okay, uh, so that was just a summary of the golden decay channel. Uh, and now uh, I'm going to show that uh, it's not an experiment uh, for a single decay. There are many, many more uh, decays which can be measured and which have been measured in the past, but which uh, with much smaller uh, sample of uh, keons. So since we have uh, an extreme amount of keons, we can now improve on all kinds of uh, measurements for different uh, rare or forbidden decay channels. Uh, so this, uh, this is now a general slide, or slide with general remarks about uh, search for uh, positive chaos decaying into a lepton and, uh, right, and the neutral state, uh, which is outside of the standard model and which in principle could be considered like a right-handed neutrino. Uh, obviously, it's a fermionic state uh, because uh, chaos is a uh, spin zero meson. Uh, so, uh, let's assume that uh, it's something like a right neutrino in the mixes with the three active neutrino states from the standard model, then the parameterization of the branching ratio is uh, rather, uh, rather simple. Uh, this is just a kinematic uh, factor and uh, we are after this mixing. Uh, so, this mixing is going to be very small and uh, once it is uh, less than, the, the square of it is less than 10 to the minus 4, then the heavy neutral state can be treated as, as stable. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to show from here uh, will be uh, based on data acquired uh, in 2017 and 2018. Uh, so now the results, uh, you can see now the improvement just based uh, compared to the uh, previous NA62 uh, data. Uh, this is now the, the new result for uh, the decay when there is a positron uh, in the final state. And uh, uh, f just to remember is that uh, this mixing, the square of the mixing is at the level 10 to the minus 9 and uh, it's an improvement over two orders of magnitude. Uh, I will probably, well, this is now some details about uh, the analysis for uh, the decay when there is a positively charged muon instead of positron in the final state. And uh, to save time, I will skip this. Uh, this is now the result for uh, the muon in the final state. And again, it's a, a more or less uh, two orders or more than one order of magnitude improvement over the previous result. And the, again, the mixing uh, is supposed to be at the level 10 to minus 8. Uh, this is basically a combination of the previous two plots, uh, so I can skip this. Uh, now, uh, considering a decay when there would be a, a heavy or an unknown particle, but not a fermion, but a scalar or a vector, uh, the spin one particle, uh, we did uh, the corresponding searches and uh, these, uh, we did not find any signal, but we pushed uh, the limits uh, down to the limits which are shown in this plot and uh, uh, with a note that uh, the limits are stronger for the scalar mode uh, since uh, that is more um, limited by a decay of a scalar particle, spin zero 
Keon particle. Uh, then there, is, there was a related search uh, for uh, this branching ratio and uh, no signal was found. Uh, so the limit is like this. Uh, next, uh, we are going to talk about uh, searches for uh, the case when there would be a lepton flavor or lepton number violation. And uh, surprisingly, there could be such the case uh, if uh, there is a uh, kind of uh, uh, heavy state which uh, can be similar to the state which we need in the neutrino less double beta decay. So if, if uh, this is available, uh, then we can have a decay when a K plus is decaying into not pi plus, but pi minus, and uh, then two positively charged leptons. Or if there is a heavy leptoquark, uh, we can have a decay like this. That, uh, there would be a uh, positively charged kaon decaying, say, into a positively charged pion, and then uh, two charged leptons of a different flavor. And uh, I'm not going to show the details of the analysis in a short talk like this. Uh, so these are just the, the results for, from different uh, decay modes. And uh, just this uh, list should convince you that uh, the NA62 experiment really carefully looks at uh, all kinds of uh, decay channels which are available to the experiment uh, with the corresponding uh, new limits for the branching fraction. I, I say branching ratio, but sometimes it's branching fraction used. And uh, this would be the corresponding papers. Uh, actually, this collaboration doesn't produce uh, hundreds of papers like uh, the Atlas or the LHC. There are like uh, maybe on average two or three papers in a year. Uh, again, this is uh, just a detail of, of uh, this analysis, which I will, which I will probably skip. Uh, because in the last part of my talk, I would like to talk about uh, a, a different regime uh, with no uh, chaos. We simply use the experimental setup, which is available to us uh, for uh, a search of uh, new physics which would not which is not related to k on decays which would be like uh, say a, a dark photon uh, coming out of out of a proton beam dump here uh, so the, this uh, this is a, just an explanation that uh, we can arrange for uh, this uh, shutdown of the beam uh, at the after the target or basically replace the target, remove the target, and then just uh, have a beam dump, and uh, then look at uh, some states uh, which might be uh, kind of recovered, uh, or which might be very weakly interacting with the standard model particles and uh, still observed uh, in our uh, experimental setup. And uh, it all can be parameterized uh, by a kind of dark photon uh, being coupled to uh, the standard model of F mini tensor, which is called B mu nu here. Uh, so the F prime is from the dark photon and the B is from, uh, from the standard QED photon uh, with an uh, epsilon, uh, an unknown coupling. And then there would be basically uh, two two parameters, uh, the, the mass of the dark photon and uh, this epsilon coupling. Uh, and this plot shows that uh, if the dark photon is, uh, the mass is below uh, something like 500 or 600 uh, GeV, then the dominant uh, decay mode is the leptonic decay mode. Uh, and we are well suited for, for charged leptons in, in the experiment. Uh, so then we can have this uh, beam dump operation. 
and uh, look uh, into the parameter space of uh, the mass and uh, the epsilon. And uh, then this would, uh, well, we, we haven't discovered the dark photon, but uh, we can exclude uh, some regions in this parameter space. This is the mass of the dark photon. This is the coupling. And uh, in gray areas, these gray regions uh, correspond to exclusion regions by other experiments. And uh, the colored uh, region, the, this inside, is now excluded by, and the inside here is now excluded by the NA62 experiment. And this is quite uh, uh, important for people who uh, try to um, work on uh, predictions or uh, new physics uh, coming out of uh, new light states, like, like axion-like particles. Okay, so I think I am about to, to finish here. Uh, these are simply some details which we can skip. Uh, finally, uh, I basically concentrated on uh, the NA62 results here, uh, where there is a special golden decay mode of, uh, of a kaon uh, into a pion and a neutrino pair. Uh, and uh, we have observed, uh, 20, I didn't say, we have observed uh, 20 events, and out of those uh, 20 events, uh, this is now the best uh, number which we have. Uh, however, this is still from the data acquired by the end of 2018, and we now have uh, new data, and uh, there will be new result, and we'll continue running by 2025. So the chance is that uh, we will get to, we, we hope to be close to 50 events and uh, correspondingly this, this error should or would go down by, by a factor of two. And we also work hard to uh, kind of uh, make this systematic error as small as possible. And then there are, besides this golden decay channel, then there are uh, many new limits on or new limits on many uh, rare uh, decay channels, uh, which uh, are either forbidden in the standard model or, uh, yeah, basically they are all uh, forbidden in the standard model. Uh, besides the one with the muon and three neutrino states. Uh, and uh, the last remark is that uh, we have the ability to look uh, for uh, these uh, dark photon searches and uh, can contribute uh, with uh, exclusion regions in uh, the corresponding parameter space. And since this is an ongoing experiment, uh, please uh, stay tuned. There will be new results uh, coming out of this uh, 2021 up to 25 period, which we call run two uh, of the NA62 experiment. So thank you very much.